Yo, in today's video, we'll be looking at creepy and strange TikToks that are gonna make you question everything. It's so echoey in here. The solar eclipse happening next month could fulfill a 2,000 year old Bible prophecy. On April 8th, a once in a lifetime solar eclipse is gonna plunge certain parts of America into total darkness during the middle of the day. The shocking part is this eclipse is gonna be passing through eight towns called Nineveh, which is the city recorded in the Bible where the prophet Jonah warned them about the wrath of God to come. This will also be taking place under the constellation Cetus, which means the whale. As many of you know, the prophet Jonah was swallowed by a whale before being spit onto the shore to go preach repentance to Nineveh. Jesus says in Matthew 16, 4, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Ancient history also shows that right before Nineveh repented in the Bible story of Jonah, there was a total solar eclipse called the Bur Segal Eclipse, which was one of the astronomical phenomena that caused an entire pagan city to repent from their pagan practices and turn back to the true God Yahweh. This solar eclipse was also engraved in ancient Assyrian archaeological findings, further verifying that in astronomical event took place during this time. America has abandoned God and fully embraced perverse secular values, and this eclipse very well may be a sign from the heavens that the doors for repentance are closing. Meaning of Yo, y'all agree with my mans? With what he's saying? Hey, I kind of believe it. So like, what if this total eclipse, right, that's coming over America, what if it like burns everything in its path? What if it's not really an eclipse or something? What if it's just like one of these lasers. You know what? I'm about to get a blue uh, a roof. I'm about to go get some blue paint from Home Depot today. And I'm about to paint my roof because I don't need that coming over here. Being alive is just being alive. That's what we're all here for. So there are noises being heard all around the world, you guys. This is in Colorado. Check this out. I got a couple videos. Listen. Stay inside, baby. What the fuck is that? Okay, but really, what the fuck? Here goes another person that experienced the same thing in Colorado as well. <laughs> Sounds like a a jet, but it's super loud. It literally sounds like something is grinding over the firmament, y'all. Literally, like something is grinding over it. it. Sounded like a jet, but it was so loud. Like louder than normal. So I do this quite often, guys. You ever like hear a noise like this, right? and you look up and there's no planes or anything in sight, but you swore you just heard a plane fly by, you like, you could have swore it was like right over your house too, you know, that's how loud it is, but then there's nothing. And in Florida, Putnam County to be specific, people were hearing sonic booms everywhere, and some of these sonic booms were actually causing damage to people's homes. Mm. I don't know what the hell that plane just dropped, but it dropped a bomb behind my house and it blew up. Something just exploded. I don't know if it was somebody's propane tank, but now there's a gassy smell. Um... This is a phrase I coined when examining old photos in 2018 when I began looking at... Hey, so... I don't know who this guy is who says he's he coined this, but I might have heard this somewhere else, but I've been saying this for a while too. I always talk about the vanilla skies when looking at these old pictures because the sky is literally just white, right? And I never zoomed in like this, but it shows, it looks like someone whited the picture out, you know? So there's something up with that. And also, you know, I think about the movie with Tom Cruise, Vanilla Sky all the time. That movie messed with me. I watched that when I was a kid photos myself with respect to mystery history and investigation in the videos that I did on my YouTube channel called UAP after seeing Martin leak his work on his channel. Now these skies that I called vanilla skies, I also called Miller skies, I had noticed first that the painted on flags were mm. atop the buildings in an obviously manipulated, hand-animated or painted 
depiction on a photograph. Now these are photographs that are presented as being historic. And in many cases they're showing the old world as we are discovering on this channel. I began to see such anomalies as these and furthermore unnaturally cropped edges mm -hmm. and began to realize it wasn't just overexposures of light but purposeful film exposures or masking during darkroom development perhaps and other types of manipulations. That's now, crazy. This can be acceptable and there can be good reasons for this but when we're talking about so guys when you're on instagram and you see a model and you're thinking man she's looking super curvy and nice right zoom in a little bit and look at the background see if she got some vanilla sky see if they ain't crop it out and photoshop that mug like they did these pictures about supposedly historical depictions it makes one wonder and the purpose of they're trying to hide history. That's the purpose. We were all thinking it. Israel is trying to buy TikTok. And this is one of those I mean, articles I say that. that I had no idea how deep it was about to go until I fell in. So bear with me here. And before the AI censors me, I, the country Israel is not trying to buy it. It's people with really deep ties to Israel. This lead came from Whitney Webb, um, the patron saint of independent journalism. And it starts here with Steve Mnuchin who just announced that he's putting together investors to buy TikTok. But wait, Ian, Steve Mnuchin was the U.S. Treasury Secretary. He's not Israel, right? Well, let's peel this onion back one layer at a time, starting with just the fact that he's Jewish, just par for the course. And don't worry, we're gonna get all the way to Mossad here in a second. But it's important that you know that Mnuchin had a long, illustrious career at Goldman Sachs and hedge funds. He was a key member of the Trump campaign. And among his many ties to questionable people in finance, he's buddies with Michael Milken, who's famous for being one of the richest and most evil scumbags in the history of the last century of finance. Michael Milken revolutionized the art of stealing from the poor and getting really rich by manipulating financial markets. And in the interest of shitting on Trump and Biden when credit is due, Trump pardoned him right before he left office. So anyways, Mnuchin has long been a huge supporter of Israel. He's been talking about how it's time to invest in Israel again after October 7th. And he recently traveled to Israel with his business partner, David Friedman. David Friedman is the United States ambassador to Israel for the Trump campaign. He has a long relationship with Trump going back to 1994, where he was a lawyer representing the Trump organization. And he's not like just Jewish. He's like born to a family of rabbis and went to Hebrew Academy. You, you know what I mean? And they were trying to recruit the ex-head of Mossad to join their investment fund. But from what I can tell, it didn't pan out or he got recruited to a, a different banking enterprise. But that's the kind of person that they want on their team. We're specifically referring to Yossi Cohen, um, the former director of Mossad. And a bunch of news outlets seemed to pick up on it and were reporting on it when they were just in talks and nothing was confirmed yet. And maybe it heated up too much and they decided maybe, maybe not a good look. But one venture that our buddies Mnuchin and Friedman have invested in with their uh, fund called Liberty Strategic Capital is this company called Cyber Reason. It's a US-Israeli late-stage cybersecurity startup. This is their logo. Mm -hmm. And Steve mm -hmm. Mnuchin has a board seat because of his investment firm's funding for this venture. Whitney Webb has done all kinds of reporting about this company, doing simulations about that thing where we vote. Like, gosh, what would happen if we had to impose martial law because the thing where you vote got attacked? I'm not making that up. It's a deep rabbit hole. And their board of directors includes people like a vice president of security and privacy engineering at Google and a deputy CISO and director of intelligence and operations at Lockheed Martin. And this is the consortium of players that are pooling money to try to buy TikTok. But yeah, think about all the names he just said, right? All these people trying to come together to buy TikTok. Of all things, TikTok. Why are they so concerned about TikTok, guys? What's the bigger play here? There's something else at hand. So I think it's it's uh, privacy and security. And I think that these people want all of your privacy and security, meaning they don't want you to have any. 
because I've been doing a lot of reporting on this TikTok bill. I've been in a lot of Twitter spaces with, with people in the policy realm talking about how the policy is getting written and why it's getting written. And from a TikTok creator and TikTok user standpoint, the one thing that we're all thinking is like, the censorship is not about China on TikTok. It's about Israel. And the problem oh, nice. that all these politicians and rich people have about TikTok is pretty obviously, probably, allegedly, my opinion only, the massive support for the other, you know, country that was there before. And it's just so frustrating that when you oppress people's free speech with censorship, they don't just give in and believe what you want them to believe. It's almost like they free speech more. So there's a simple solution. And just to test the whole like China is trying to control what we see on TikTok theory. The other day I made a video about all of the greatest hits of what's bad about China to see if it would get censored. Like I mentioned Tiananmen Square, I hashtag Tiananmen Square, talked about the Uyghur Muslims, just to see if China's really suppressing these hashtags like we're told and China's really like keeping everyone from seeing anti-China content, like you'd think that would get censored. Yeah, it, um, this screenshot's at 33,000 views yesterday. It's mm. at like 400, 500,000 views mm. today. Doesn't feel like China is trying to censor content or even has the power to. And as a TikTok creator who gets censored all the freaking time, I can tell you that the things you get censored about are the CIA and Israel and any adjacent topics that those organizations are interested in, like Joe Biden, for example. And yeah, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, why anti-Semitism? It's, yeah, no. Um, foreign government lobbying our, our country with their foreign government dollars to influence our government policy, to do things that are not good for us, to send our aid money to their country to give them free healthcare while well, we don't have it, actively operating like you know blackmail rings with a certain high profile financier that allegedly offed himself having an unsanctioned nuclear program that they totally don't have that's never been officially confirmed because they're not supposed to have had it but like they got it like after a certain president that wasn't into it suddenly had a, a part of his head missing you know mm. there's, a, there's a lot of things going on here and i'm not saying all conspiracy theories are true i'm not i'm, I'm just saying like this is a problem and I'm just saying that, like, you don't have to be very bright to see what's going on here. So you were all thinking it, and you weren't wrong. Yep, we was all thinking it. Not gonna lie. Zombie cells. Yeah, what happened? I'm starting to fast. Tomorrow. I think everyone should fast every now and then, even if it's not for like some crazy amount of time. Fast for a few hours, you know, fast in the morning. Don't eat till noon. Try to see how that works for you. You know, try to push it back a little bit later, you know, and just see how long you can go without eating. You'll be surprised at how long your body can withstand these things. I mean, well, uh, as a single man, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> I have no shame in my game with okay. that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's where I was at the time, and we went to um, uh, Florida. We got invited to a, a puffy party, I a New Year's Eve party. Uh -huh. Went to the party, you know. All uh, dudes? Yeah, yeah. Nah, it was actually a good party. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. it, it was at, on South Beach, right? Right. 
So then we, you know, we go to the house, and then, you know, uh, he, he invited us to the house because he wanted to go to the club afterwards, right? I was like, right. okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So Superhead is with me, you know what I'm saying? Karen, Karen is, th- is with me, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Superhead. Yeah. So she takes me, she, you know, she, Puffy calls me outside. He's like, hey, man, you know, the, um, that, that girl you, you know about the girl you, I was like, yeah, man, you know, yeah, everybody know, but you know what I'm saying? What's happening? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, uh, you know, that's the devil, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what you mean that's the devil? The devil got a pretty mouth. Yeah, I was like, what you mean that's the devil? You know, and then he was like, yeah, man, she she videotaping your fingers in the booty. That's a new movie. You know movie. what I'm saying? I was the like, what? The devil sucks like, penis. Hey, yo, what the fuck are you talking oh, about? We oh, buy, oh, we buy, we buy. I heard a penis and a finger in her yeah. ass. Like, what? She said, he, he, he so Puffy tells you that he go, she. She will videotape you with fingers in the booty. Yeah, and I was I like, was what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, what, you know what does that mean? So then, so then I go back in the house and I ask her, what the fuck are you talking about? He, he well, you said you're a filmer. No, I, I did ask him. He's just like, whatever. He, he went off and did his thing. And I was was like, he okay. limping? No. <laughs> <laughs> he walked away and a nail fell out of his boot. No, I'm going to clear this shit up. Cause I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to have my name. Crazy. I ain't going to so have my name out there crazy like that. Go ahead, go ahead. So then, so then, so then he say, so then she say, uh, I told him what he, he told me. And she was like, oh, she started laughing like a mother. I'll tell you later. So then, so then I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to. Make a big deal of it, whatever. It's only so, fair. so then he's you no. Know, then then <laughs> I guess he's had some prior incident with her that he don't want nobody to know about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we get into the truck. He said, "Let's go to this club." So everybody following the, tr- the, the car. The car is fucking silent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we get to this club and then we walk in the back, the way, back way. It's a VIP lounge. Ain't nobody in there. And then you know the club is going. It's all jumping. And then I'm sitting there with with old girl. So I, so so then, so then, so then uh, you know, he he's dealing his business. We go down and get a drink. You know, we sitting there bobbing to the music, and then she say, she point over the corner. It's two dudes kissing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. Then it's girls in the club too, and then she point another direction. It's another dude over there, like butt ass naked dancing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We take off, man. You know what I'm saying? We leave the club so directly. Saying, I didn't say peace to nobody. I didn't see nobody. Gay. Yeah, it was it was a suspect. Lot of males, a lot of a lot, lot, lot of suspects. The club you was could chalk it up. You could chalk it up to being in Miami or whatever. I never blame it on the. I've I, I been I, in a gang. I've been in a gang of clubs, man. The club was called. And I ain't never I ain't never mistakenly stepped into a club having that kind of activity. You know what I'm saying? So it is. So we took a cab home back to where I was. Did you know that you really don't own your children? I'm going to show you how the United States government systematically took over parental rights and how they treat everyone as wards of the state. Book reference. Abolition of the family. With personal rights, private property, and the church abolished, to make subjection complete, the state declares that in pure collectivism, there could be no family ties for children like all other property are an asset of the community and must be robbed of family love and obligation as a necessary step to loyalty to the state. So when you see they're passing laws trying to make parental rights obsolete, this is what they're talking about and this is their agenda. It's all part of a socialist collectivist government type agenda. Marriage may be practiced if conscience insists, but it is not demanded in the interest of the new society. For with the abolishment of personal rights, private property, church, and home, Society no longer possesses a moral, ethical, or spiritual code. And when you blur the lines of morality, you get the social ills and injustices that we face as a society today. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low-class elements of the society must be brought under total control, i.e. must be housebroken, trained, and assigned a yoke and long-term social duties from a very early age, Mm. before they have an opportunity to question the propriety of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government operated daycare, aka school centers, for the occupationally orphaned children. That's crazy, y'all. We are all orphans out here. This is literally what life is right now. How many people have thought about this, right? Just thinking, like, I don't have time to do anything. I don't have time to spend with my kids. I constantly got to work. I constantly got to do this. It's literally what they wanted us to do. Preoccupation. And now when we have free time, what are we doing? We're on our phones, scrolling. We're watching TV. Not even spending time with the children. Our children are literally orphans to the school system and to society, y'all. 
come on, we got to do better. We got to take control of our children. We can't let this happen. You know, we literally let this happen. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort so that the moat of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. Like, think about that, right? People literally live in two different dimensions, two different realities, right? A person can live a certain lifestyle, right, of a lower class, and they can live in a certain neighborhood their entire life, meaning they never even left that neighborhood. So a person on the other side of town who lives a higher type of life, per se, they don't even know what that life is like. So if they were to leave there and come over here, it's like going to a whole nother world, you know? So people aren't all the same. People are different. People go through different experiences. Their lives are just different. So we have different realities within this one reality already, y'all. And this is how they separate the families by getting the children to be at school all day and how the parents work in nine to five so you don't have any time to form a social unit amongst your own families. Side note, this is why they go so hard against homeschooling because homeschooling negates socialism or any governmental interference in the household. And so it keeps the power with the parents where it rightfully belongs. Denial of personal rights. Collectivism is a denial of personal rights. The state becomes the chief concern of all. It claims that the law of equality, once applied, would destroy every human desire for individual dominance, making society safe, content, comfortable, and happy. Mm -hmm. But under socialism or collectivism, the state act as your parents. Now, in law, that's called in locus parentis or parents patriae. In locus parentis, in the place of a parent, instead of a parent, charged factitiously with a parent's rights, duties, and responsibilities. Parents patria. In the United States, the state, as a sovereign, referring to the sovereign power of guardianship over persons under disabilities, such as minors and insane and incompetent persons. And this is how and why you technically don't own your children. Yo, that's messed up, man. He dropping gems on us right there, though. But we really don't own our children. We really don't even own ourselves. I believe that our lives are owned by another entity outside of the U.S., right? I don't want to say their name because I don't want anything to get uh, banned or anything like that. But yeah, they own us, literally. It's an account number, and they own the account number. That's why you're born into debt, you know? They say you're born into sin. No, you're born into debt. Calls and a parent's self-inflicted gunshot wound. So this is my uh, retirement plaque. Barnett retired from Boeing in 2017 after working as a quality manager for more than 30 years. Since his departure, he has taken legal action against the company, mm. claiming he was retaliated against for raising safety issues internally, issues that Boeing denied at the time. Back in 2019, Barnett sat down with Today describing a haphazard safety culture at Boeing. From day one, it's just all been about schedule and hurry up and just get it done, push the planes out, we're behind schedule. You know, we don't have time to, to worry about issues that y'all bring up. In 2017, the FAA released a review upholding many of Barnett's concerns. With regards to his sudden death, the company released a statement writing, we are saddened by Mr. Barnett's passing and our thoughts are with his family and friends. Production standards at Boeing are under intense scrutiny following a series of troubling incidents involving Boeing planes. The latest on Monday when a 787 from the South American airline Lantum apparently dropped abruptly mid-flight from Sydney to Auckland, injuring at least 50 passengers and crew members. Dang. The airline says it's unclear what caused the strong movement on the flight. NBC News has also confirmed the Justice Department has launched a criminal investigation into Boeing following the blowout door plug on a 787 MAX 9 in January. The NTSB determined the plane left the Boeing plant without critical bolts that hold the plug in place. Oh, no. A scathing new FAA audit also found Boeing... Yo, just think about it. There's so many people that travel nowadays just traveling daily. So many planes up in the sky. They just trying to keep up with demand. Probably don't even got enough planes to keep up, right? Some of the planes that we fly on are probably extremely old. Like some really old planes with some new paint jobs on them or something like that. But yeah, man. Feel sorry for old boy. You really can't go up against these people or these big corporations by yourself. 
You need to have a strong team backing you before you do that. Make sure you protect it or something. Alien invasion in New York City. We can report that. The mysterious blue illumination scared many people while lighting up social media. It's not supposed to look like that in Definitely the night not. sky. The New York City skyline was mysteriously illuminated last night. Look, it's flashing. It's the sky. It looks like the end of the world or something. With a glowing shade of blue. What is that? Holy sh The sky was like such an eerie blue and everything. It was crazy. Sending many people into a confused panic. What the I said to my husband, we, we, have, we have been attacked. This is our terrorist attack. What's going on in NYC? Something's right going on. Turning others to social media for answers. Like the alien attack. It looked like a UFO coming like, from the sky. It was scary. It could be the Dude, the Boeing whistleblower just turned up not alive. You know how Boeing's planes have been falling apart midair for the last year? Like doors coming off, tires falling off mid-flight. Well, it turns out that this guy, John Barnett, who spent almost a decade as the quality manager for a plant making the 787 Dreamliner, one of the problem childs of Boeing, well, he retired in 2017, and he's been taking legal action against them ever since. He's been alleging things like, when a plane isn't getting built fast enough, they'll tell their dudes just to go and get scrap from the scrap bin, like broken parts and parts that didn't pass inspection, just slap them on there so the plane gets done in time. He also claimed that up to one quarter of the oxygen masks would fail if actually deployed, plus a number of other allegations that Boeing obviously denied. Mm. And then he wound up not alive in his truck in a car park on the, on the 9th of March from a, quote, self-inflicted wound. But the spooky part is what he did right before that happened. Because see, this legal battle has been going on for years now, but... Just this last week, he gave a formal deposition in which he was questioned by Boeing's lawyers. So, Boeing's lawyers just asked him a whole bunch of questions under oath about what he knows. And then, that same week, he turns out to not know anything That's anymore. That's crazy. These air companies, they probably run by the CIA, you know. Man, you can't mess with those people, yo. You got to think about it, right? These big companies like that, that make so much money, so much money, they're untouchable and they can do what they want. Right before he was due to undergo further questioning on Saturday. So what did they find out that he found out that now we're not going to find out? I mean, allegedly, obviously. If it was like an accidental death, like a car crash or something, that might, you might be able to go coincidence. But like, who fights a legal battle for years and years and years, and then the like the year when Boeing's problems are all coming to light and proving you right, then you decide to off yourself. Mm. Like once like the world is like totally turning to your side, then you're you're over it and you're gonna just quit. I mean, really? So I don't know what's going on, but uh, puts on Boeing. <laughs> Yeah, it puts on Boeing for real, for real. This man publicly alleged Boeing of ignoring safety concerns on its airplanes, and he was recently found dead. This is John Barnett, and this is a crazy story. So John worked for Boeing for decades. He had a full career there. He was a very trusted employee, and everybody who knew John said he was a brave man with the highest levels of integrity a person could have. So John actually worked at Boeing as a quality control engineer and manager until he retired in 2017. But now we have to go to 2019. Do you remember when those two Boeing 737 planes nosedived after takeoff, killing everybody on board? That was a crazy, crazy time to be flying. And John actually went public and stated that Boeing was ignoring safety procedures and checkups on their planes. In fact, just a few months after those crashes, John told the BBC that he had seen workers fitting faulty parts on planes to rush to meet deadlines. He also said that the oxygen masks on the 787 Dreamliner had a 1 in 4 chance of failing. Now, if there was somebody that was going to know the truth of this situation, I would assume it would be John since he was on the floor working in the Boeing production facilities for over three decades. John also stated that at one point he wrote down some violations he saw and he was then reprimanded, got in trouble by the company. 
They allegedly told him that they would rather have him tell them the problems in person face to face rather than document them. So Boeing has been non-compliant in a lot of these issues. Obviously, when your plane crashes are causing hundreds of deaths, I think you should be investigated to the max potential. But even recently, Boeing was back in the headlines when an exit door exploded mid-flight. In fact, the Justice Department has actually opened up a criminal investigation into the matter, and Boeing has been accused of not being cooperative with investigators. They even recently admitted to Congress that they had no records, no records in writing about that incident, which is very suspicious to me. So let's go back to 2019. John went public with his allegations against Boeing. They spoke out against John. And that's what led to the events that were happening just a few days ago. You see, this was all tied into a defamation lawsuit that John had actually brought against Boeing. John was claiming that Boeing had actually hurt his career and his reputation because he had come forward with these allegations. He was alleging that they had basically smeared his name. So on Saturday, March 9th, just last week, John was supposed to show up to give some testimony in his deposition case. On that day, John was in South Carolina for the defamation suit, and he was supposed to answer some questions that day relating to all of these allegations. Now, according to John's legal team, people that knew him, he didn't seem like he was any different than he had ever been before that day. His lawyers have actually stated in interviews that he was in pretty good spirits, looking forward to putting all this behind him. The case was nearing an end. His lawyers also even said that they saw no indication that he would do anything to hurt himself. Well, on Saturday when John didn't show up for the court proceedings, that's when people went to go check on him, and they found him dead in his truck parked in front of the hotel that he was staying at from a alleged self-inflicted gunshot wound. Alleged. Now, obviously, this has a lot of people talking. People are questioning the fact that John would decide to take his own life on the day that he did, when he was supposed to be answering all these questions and giving out information. And obviously, people from his legal team to people on the internet, lots of different individuals are calling for a full and thorough investigation of exactly what transpired here. What's crazy about this, right? They put this in the hood movies all the time, right? When they want to label people as like drug kingpins and things like that, right? They only do it with the certain people. And then, you know, they, there will be no witnesses because all the witnesses have been knocked off, right? What do you think's happening here? The biggest gang bangers in the world. You know, these people that make all this money. The witnesses about to come to stand. They ain't want that information coming out. Guess what? Witness ain't coming no more. And it's crazy. It's like, like he said, why would this man do that? And he been fighting this battle for how long? For years? You know? For what reason would you have to do that at this point? You know? At the end of the day, you could just be like, you know what? I lost the battle. I'm just going to live the rest of my life regular. They won. They going to live their life. It is what it is. But no, nah, there's something deeper here. Something way deeper than that. Regardless, though, I think that Boeing has some serious questions to answer here throughout all of this. And seeing all these tragedies happening and witnessing the failure of Boeing's planes time and time again definitely has me a little more concerned when I fly nowadays. I don't even want to fly anymore, y'all. I really don't. I typically fly across country, right? But I don't want to anymore. You know, I'd rather drive a whole 24 hours. Even though that's not even safe either, though, you know, because there's a bunch of crazy drivers out here. But with stuff like this, man, just imagine being on a plane and you know it's about to crash. Imagine it just going down. You got 15, 20 minutes of just knowing you about to hit the flow. Nah, man, I don't even want to go through that. Now, I'm not a conspiracy girly, but it's giving suspicious. Because, um, are y'all soft launching this man's mistress while his wife is missing? Like, mm -hmm. cause something happened to Kate on Christmas. She get taken to the hospital. Ain't nobody seen her since. Then when people start being like, mm, where is the Princess of Wales? Y'all sending out grainy ass pictures from TMZ that you can barely see. She got sunglasses on. Then y'all put out a photo that's so heavily edited that the Associated Press, Reuters, all these people are like, don't repost this photo. It's given fake. I saw a video that somebody put on Twitter 
about how that photo was taken in November because it looks like they're just wearing Photoshop versions of outfits that they wore to some baby mother's thing in November. Look, we seen where they put up an older photo of her and they like overlaid it and it was literally the exact same photo. The Princess of Wales, I don't know where she's at. Something happened. Y'all seen that new movie, Damsel? That's where she's at. If you ain't seen the movie, go watch the trailer. Which is also like the way that y'all document the hell out of everything that this woman and her children wear. I don't know how y'all thought y'all was going to get away with that for like, no. It's like things that are occupying my brain right now to distract me from things that are giving me anxiety is wherever the hell Kate Middleton is and the stingray that may or may not have been impregnated by a shark. Did it give birth yet? Because like Wait, you what? would think, right? Stingray if shark. Charles is sick, Lizzie's gone, you want to like parade out like saying like, no, the monarchy's good. We good. Like, look at William and Kate over here. They got all their little kids. It's great. We having a good time over here. And it's like, if this woman is very sick, please don't parade her in front of us, right? Because it's already weird enough that y'all make these people, like, come and stand on the street three hours after giving birth, you know? And, like, I'm not British. I'm American, right? So I don't really know what be going on on the little island over there. There's a lot of over-explaining going on for a group of people who historically do not like to over explain anything like some some the milk don't ain't curled all the way over over there if you know what i'm saying okay because now there's that article where they're like oh she's in the car with will but you can only see like the side profile of her face like you can't see who you know who's in the car it's a woman in the car with him we don't know who that woman is because it's conveniently taken like this and you all you see is the side of somebody's face with glasses on and a hat and william could have been a man we don't even know if it was a woman. Suspicious. Like y'all bringing up old photos and body doubles. Like the lengths y'all are going to make everybody think that nothing is going on when there's clearly something going on is given suspicious. Like just if she's not well, just say she's not well. And I feel like everybody would chill out. But y'all trying to convince us that this woman is just out here. Like why am I in this? This ain't got no bearing on my life, but it's like, this is my Roman Empire now, as the kids say, okay? Right, that's true, man. That whole Kate thing In is my crazy. last video, I showed that the Zionists are trying to buy TikTok, but has anyone looked at who brought the bill in the first place and who pays him? Because I just did. Here, check this out. I ain't gonna lie. I need to call this guy. Cancel this clothing company. Yo, his research is next level. I need to find something that I need researched and he will find the answer. I'm about to hire this man. Look, I'm telling you, his research is crazy. This is the bill right here. Representative Mike Gallagher. That would be this charming devil right here. And if we look at his top contributors for this election cycle, Palantir and Google are at the top mm. with $44,000 and $40,000. But right there, that's APAC with $17,000. But wait, there's more. We're gonna switch this to the last election cycle in 2022 and scroll down. And would you look at that? His top contributor mm. that got him elected in 2022 was APAC with $44,000 contribution. If you didn't know, that's the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee the Zionist lobby group that doesn't need to register as a foreign agent because they refuse to. That right there though, that is why they are able to do so much is because they lobby. They lobby together to get people in office, to get people in a position that they want them to be, to be able to pass the laws that they won't pass. Now us as a people, if we want the same thing, we have to be involved if we are going to continue to live in this system, right? this capitalist system, if it's still even a thing right now, we don't even know that. But if so, we have to lobby to get the right people in office so that we can do the things for us that we need to be done. Because that's one thing we don't do. We just cry and complain and go march about who's going to office, but we're not putting people in office like these other people are, right? We're not raising people to put them where they need to be. 
So just to clarify, the TikTok ban bill was introduced by a guy who's some of his top contributions are coming from the Zionists and from Google and Palantir, top tech companies associated with the CIA and Mossad. And now Mnuchin's trying to buy it. And ever since he stopped being treasury secretary for Trump, his business model is basically just ally with as many Zionists as humanly possible. People like David Friedman, people like the ex-chief of Mossad, Yossi Cohen, getting board seats on companies like Cyber Reason, an Israeli tech site. Yo, Cyber Reason's like logo is crazy, guys. Like, okay, first it's like an owl, right? But it's like an owl reptilian in a way. Because if you look, I, man, I don't know exactly where it's at. It might be in Italy somewhere. I've seen this picture. It's related to the Pope, I believe, but there's like a big old auditorium in a way. And it's shaped just like that logo right there. And that's Drake's logo. What is the owl, man? Y'all know what it is? I don't know. Y'all tell me. Let me know in the comment section. Look into the owl. Look into what it really stands for. And then we'll see who these people are. Cyber company, which it's worth noting, also has a Google person on their board, as well as Lockheed Martin. I mean, I'm speculating here. These are not facts, but it's looking more and more like the Israel lobby is the one that brought the bill. And now it's looking like Zionists are lining up to buy TikTok. Can't imagine why. And if you can't imagine why, here's an audio from the chief of the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, that might enlighten you as to why. Are you getting the picture yet? Because mm -hmm. I got a picture that might help you. And I just want to remind you that pro-Palestine content on TikTok is some of the most censored content there is. And despite that, this is the data from TikTok. No one on TikTok is trying to support Israel. Everyone on TikTok is trying to support Palestine. Mr. Greenblatt is right. The Zionists have a huge, uh, sorry, a major, major, major TikTok problem. And they should probably start devoting all of their energy towards this. You feel me? But what do I know? I'm just some dude in his living room. I bet the government's telling us the truth. I bet it's all about China. Yo, that is crazy y'all yo it's kind of like the 70s with the hippies right when everyone was waking up back then and then they basically destroyed them with drugs and then you know you had the 80s and stuff and people was waking up then and then you had more drugs and street violence what they gonna do now that everything's just because of this digital thing right and it travels so fast so are they trying to ban tiktok next thing you know these people gonna be on drugs and violence you know what i'm saying it's gonna be some crazy stuff going on They'll go to whatever measures they can to control their interests. It's wild, y'all. You know what I think we should do? I think we should lobby together as a people, and the people should own TikTok. You know, if they're going to force them to sell it, sell it to the people. We got millions of people here. If we can get every person to put in a dollar, we can buy TikTok. I'm just saying, man, it's a thought. It's a thought. But yeah, these are some of the most creepy and strange TikToks that are out there. Don't forget to subscribe. Turn your notification bell on. And until next time, YouTube, peace.